Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today in this tutorial we are going to learn about recursive function in Python. Now there are many students around who find it very difficult to understand how exactly a recursive function works. All I can say that at the end of this video recursive function is going to be extremely easy for you. And anyway always remember in your life that impossible is nothing and so do the recursive function. So here we go. So the very first question is what exactly is a recursive function? So a function which is called under itself is called as recursive function, which means that we will be giving a call to a function under itself. So we do this to generate a series of numbers just like we do it using a loop. And the main purpose of this is like for dynamic programming where we need to break down a problem into smaller sub problems to achieve a solution. So we will understand this with an example. So we will take a sample code in front of you. That's the code in front of you. Name of the function is generate and it is taking the value as n, which is an integer value. And the output is 1, 2, 3 and 4. That's the series of number. So name of the function is generate as you can see to generate a series of number and that's the call to the function generate now you can clearly see that we are giving a call to the function generate inside itself so now let us understand this how exactly we are getting this output one two three and four so let us understand how is it uh, working how we are getting the output one two three and four so this is the same sample code in front of you the function is generate and that's the main function now the first line of code of the main function is the call to the function that is generate. So the controller will jump to the function. Now what we have to do is we have to assume that an another copy of function has been called. So let us assume that an another copy of the same function has been called. And the value that I'm passing to this function is 5. The value of n is 5 because I'm passing the value 5. So n will get the value 5 and the condition if n is equal to 1 now this condition doesn't get satisfied because the value of n is 5 so it will go to the else part now in else part there's a statement called as j is equal to generate now this is a call to the same function so what we will do again we will assume that another copy of the same function has been called but i'm passing the value as n minus 1 that is the value of n was 5 so 5 minus 1 that is 4 so over here the value of n for this particular copy will be 4 again the condition if n is equal to 1 doesn't get satisfied it will go to the else part and again one more call to the same function so we'll assume one more copy of the same function but the value of n will be 3 since since I'm passing the value n minus 1, so that was 4, 4 minus 1, that is 3. So that's the function that has been called. And then again, the function, uh, the if statement doesn't get satisfied. So we will give a call to another function. That is the else part. It will go to the else part. And uh, then we are passing the value that is n minus 1. Now over here, the value of n will be 2. So that's the function, that's the copy of function that I have reached. And from here, again, one more copy will get generated. Now over here, the value of n is 2. I'm passing the value n minus 1. So that is the value of n for this particular copy will be 1. Now over here, the condition of if statement, the if statement gets satisfied. That is the value of n is 1. And so the value that will get returned will be the value 1. So you can see over there. So I'm returning this value to its previous call. So this will get returned to its previous call and it will be collected by the variable j. Now j will get the value 1 and then I'm printing the value that is 1. So we got our first output that is 1. And then the third statement, the third statement of the else part is return n. Now the value of n for this particular copy was 2 so that value will get returned to its previous call so j will now rece receive the value 2 
So I will print the value 2. Now I got the output 2. First was 1 and now I got the value 2. And then the third statement that is return n. Now you can see the value of n for this particular copy is 3. So that value will get returned to its previous call. And uh, I will print the value and then again return statement. Now the value of n for this particular copy is 4. So that will be received by j and then I'll print the value and again return n. Now the value of n for this particular copy is 5 which will get returned to its previous call that was the first statement of the main program. Now I'm not printing this value if I'm printing this value I'll get the output as 1, 2, 3 and uh, 4 and 5 that's the uh, series that will get generated. So this is how uh, you know a recursive function works so if you assume it as a uh, copies the series of copies so it will be very easy for you to understand now what we will do is uh, we will take an, another example where the sample code will be almost the same certain changes we will make and we will generate uh, we will calculate the factorial of a number so let us understand that code now let's calculate factorial of a number using the recursive function. Now you can see that is the same function with uh, certain minor changes I have made. There is no print statement and I'm returning the, returning the value j into n. Now let us understand how this function works and how it is calculating factorial of a number. Now the first statement of the main function that is fact is equal to generate and I'm passing the value as 5. So let us assume one more copy has been called and the value that I'm passing is 5. So n is equal to 5 and will receive the value 5. And the if statement will, uh, will not get satisfied. So it will go to the else part. Now in else part, again I'm giving a call and I'm passing the value as n minus 1. So the value will be 4 for n. And uh, again for this function, it will go to the else part and I'm calling the function n minus 1 that is 4 minus 1 that is 3. So we will assume an, an, another copy and the value for this will be 3 and will be 3. Again the condition doesn't get satisfied so the else part will get executed and uh, again we will give a call to the function. So this is the copy that got generated. Now the value of n for this will be 2 and from here the value that will get passed will be 1. So let us assume that this is the final copy that we have reached. And now over here the condition, the if statement gets satisfied. And I am return, returning the value as 1. Now this value will be received by j. So the value of j will be 1. And then the second statement of the else part that is return j into n. Now you can see the value of n is 2 for this particular copy and the value of j is 1. So 1 into 2 that is 2. This value will get returned to its previous call. Now over here the value of j will be 2 because we have uh, returned the value 1 into 2 that will be collected by j. And then I am returning the value j into n. Now the value of j is 2 and the value of n for this particular copy is 3. So that is uh, 3 into 2 that is 6. This will be returned to its previous call and it will be collected by the variable j. So 6 will be there. So the value of j is 6 and the value of n for this particular copy is 4. So 6 into 4 that is 24 that will be returned to its previous call. So that's 24 that j will be the j will have the value 24 and then 24 into n. Now the value of n for this particular function is 5. That is 24 into 5 that is 120. Now this value will be collected by the variable called as fact as you can see over here. And then I'm printing the value fact. And what's the value of fact? That is 120. Now that's the factorial of for the number 5. And so we have the output as 120. 
so you can understand it's pretty simple to understand if you assume the series of copies this way you can understand it's very easy recursive function seems very complicated at times and if you really go for dynamic programming where you have to uh, implement uh, some bigger problems you have to break down those problems and for a solution and then you have to implement uh, a recursive function in that case now there are so many other programs you can do it with the recursive function you can generate uh, the fibonacci series using the recursive function and there are so, so many series you can generate so you can practice and if you practice it will make you perfect so i hope you understood this tutorial this example so before i say goodbye to you do subscribe to my channel there's a subscribe button in front of you click on that and after that uh, click on the bell icon so that you can get regular no notifications of my upcoming videos and always remember one thing in your life that impossible is nothing bye for now